Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. We're joined right now by the governor of the great state of Texas, Greg Abbott. Governor, always a pleasure to speak to you, sir. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so we have a lot to get to, and I want to get to what's going on in your state with the sanctuary cities, uh, both you signing the bill and now a, a, a lawsuit against uh, that, uh, that bill. Um, but I, I want to ask you, and I'd be remiss certainly if I did not, your take on what we're seeing going on with the firing of the FBI director. You know, frankly, it's not all that surprising, and it's fairly predictable. Let's go back uh, to beginning two days before the firing, all the way back through the preceding months, and that is uh, there was uh, bipartisan support uh, and agreement uh, that uh, Congress and the executive branch had lost, lost trust uh, in FBI Director Comey. Uh, and so uh, this would come as no surprise whatsoever. Maybe the timing caught people by some surprise, but uh, everyone was almost in unanimous agreement uh, that, that Comey had lost their trust. So, uh, so, so as you say, predictable. Um, do you believe uh, that a special prosecutor is warranted uh, in, in uh, following up on this uh, as far as the, 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 the investigation into the Russian connections, quote unquote, and any, any collusion? Do you believe that, as the Democrats are calling for, a special prosecutor now more than ever is needed or, or no? I think it's grossly uh, premature. Uh, we need to see who's going to be selected as the next FBI director. Uh, rumor is this morning uh, that it's going to be someone with a long-standing history in the FBI who will be highly regarded and it's someone who will engender trust in both the House and the Senate. So, uh, so you don't believe, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so you think sit back and wait and, uh, and let the investigation continue as is as opposed to a special prosecutor? Exactly. Listen, we have very solid professionals in the FBI. It's my understanding that a solid FBI professional will be selected uh, to be the next FBI director, and this is going to be someone that Congress can trust in. Uh, and hence, I think uh, the calls for a special investigation will dissolve, except uh, among the most partisan folks up there in Washington, D.C. I got one more on this. You know, there's reports in The New York Times today that Donald Trump was furious, especially lately, at uh, Comey's testimony the other day and the Sunday shows. And, and you know what struck me, and it's been reported that it certainly struck Donald Trump, when he said it makes him slightly nauseous to think that he might have uh, influenced the outcome of the election. I mean, that could be taken a lot of ways, and no matter how you take it, it's kind of inappropriate for the FBI director to, to make that statement. Do you agree or not? Well, I think that is one of uh, several, if not many, uh, comments and actions uh, by Comey uh, that, that caused him to lose the trust of both Congress and the executive branch, because it seemed as though uh, the, his actions and his words uh, were a little bit more political than what we've seen historically from FBI directors. And so it raised a whole lot of questions about uh, was the FBI director uh, working in ways that uh, pointed towards political outcomes as opposed to just ensuring that justice is done. Yeah, and of course you and I talked after uh, Comey uh, had, had you know laid out a case against Hillary Clinton and then said there's not one prosecutor on the face of the earth basically that would, uh, that would, take, that would prosecute the case, which was bizarre. But, 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 uh, but, well, yeah, and, and Steve, that's the point, and, and that is the FBI director's job uh, is to undertake these investigations. The FBI director is not a prosecutor, uh, not the U.S. attorney, not someone who will take a case to court. Uh, and so he, he supplanted the role of the attorney in this process. And, and that was one of the factors that caused Congress and the executive branch to lose trust in the FBI director because he went beyond the bounds of what his traditional role is. All right. Now, let me uh, let me say congratulations to you. About a month ago, you were on this show with me, and I always appreciate you coming back, sir. And you said uh, you hope to sign that Sanctuary Cities bill, which would, you know, make it illegal for any city in Texas to, to become a sanctuary city or to remain a sanctuary city to the point where, you know, some uh, sheriffs might go to jail. You proudly signed that bill uh, the other day. I appreciate that, and I'm, I, I'm glad you did. Uh, talk about what it means for Texas, and then uh, let's address the fact that you got one city, uh, I believe it's El Cenizo, if I'm pronouncing correctly, near Laredo, that uh, is suing uh, uh, you, the, the state against uh, your signing of that bill. Well, th this is really very simple. And that is, we are a nation of laws. 
uh, in the public, uh, certainly in the state of Texas, our fellow Texans, but frankly, I think people across the United States of America uh, expect our laws to be enforced, especially uh, by law enforcement officers. And so our, our attitude is that uh, if you don't want to enforce the law, you shouldn't be in law enforcement. And so what we are expecting is for sheriffs and police chiefs uh, to very simply enforce the law, work collaboratively with the federal government, which, Steve, by the way, that they do on a multitude of issues, whether it be terrorism or cartel activity or human trafficking, whatever the case may be, is very, very common for local law enforcement to work with both state and federal law enforcement. This is simply along that same track to make sure that if anybody is arrested or detained who has an ICE detainer request on them, that that information will be communicated to ICE uh, in the traditional collaborative way that local and federal law enforcement have worked. But the concerns, the lawsuits, listen, we, we, we knew all along uh, that as soon as this law was signed, uh, lawsuits would be filed. However, I will tell you, Steve, that we feel very confident in, in the outcome of these lawsuits for one simple reason, and that is because of the most contentious part uh, of the Texas ban on sanctuary cities, uh, the part that allows but doesn't require law enforcement to ask someone they detained for their immigration status, that issue has already been resolved by the United States Supreme Court in the Arizona case. In the Arizona case, the, the law in Arizona required uh, a law enforcement officers to ask for immigration status. In the state of Texas, we don't require it. We allow it. But in the Arizona case, that was the one component of that case that the United States Supreme Court, including the liberals on the United States Supreme Court, said was perfectly constitutional. So you're confident in the precedent that's been set? I really do. And, and so, sure, we have to go through this process of, of going through the litigation. And sure, you know, we all see that, that lower courts make one ruling and the high court makes a different ruling. Uh, if, if lower courts' uh, decisions were binding, uh, then Obamacare would never have, have existed because right. we won the Obamacare case at the, at the lower court. So it's just a matter of getting through the court process. But I feel extremely confident that when we get back up to the United States Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will apply its decision in the Arizona case, and that will ensure that Texas wins this case. And of course, you led uh, many states, uh, over 20 states, uh, in a lawsuit against uh, Obamacare when you were Attorney General of Texas. Let me ask you about the bathroom bill, the so-called bathroom bill. We're all familiar with uh, uh, what that means. Uh, there's a report in the Dallas Morning News uh, that um, you have uh, been urging um, uh, megachurch pastors to, um, to, to uh, you know, garner support among the congregation to put pressure on the legislature. Now, I know that uh, there was a, a time limit, at least for this session, for that bill to get voted out of committee, if I have my facts straight. What's the status of the bathroom bill in Texas right now? <coughs> well, two things. One, on, on the process side, uh, there's still plenty of time to do it. The way this process works is there's a time limit for House bills to come out, uh, and then after that time limit is run, which is uh, which is now passed, uh, what the House can do is to uh, 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 amend a, a Senate bill and, and to get it out or uh, attach a House bill to a Senate bill. So there's plenty of time to get it done, but that's, that's bogged down in the process. Let's talk the substance and what's going on here. Uh, you may have seen, it wasn't too long ago, a couple of months ago, when uh, there was revelation about a federal lawsuit uh, filed by the parents of a boy in, in a high school where the boy was required to undress in front of a girl in a locker room at school. Yep. We have actions taking place like this that's just beyond the pale. And we need to ensure that our boys and girls in school are not going to be required to undress in front of each other or share the same locker room or share the same restroom. And it's incomprehensible that some school districts would be imposing this kind of conduct. So what we are seeking to achieve in the state of Texas is uniformity uh, of standards across the state of Texas so that we can protect uh, our boys and girls and locker rooms and bathrooms in our schools. I have one more for you. It does not involve the state of Texas, but I, I, I thought you, uh, you'd be a, a, a good person to ask about this. Uh, yesterday we had the second Confederate era monument removed from the city of New Orleans. And this seems to be a trend uh, around the country. Um, what's your take on it? Condoleezza Rice said recently uh, in an interview that um, she doesn't believe it's a good thing to, to remove statues and, and try to remove or hide or rewrite our history by those removals. Where do you fall on that? It's, it's important for all Americans uh, to understand all over history. 
there are some good parts and some bad parts about history. But those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, if we're going to know uh, the, the correct pathway of where we are going, we have to understand where it is that we have come from. And we will not understand that if we try to purge uh, parts of our history. And so we need, we need to uh, understand what our history is. And the only way you, you can do that is by recognizing it and not hiding it. All right. Governor, always a pleasure and an honor to speak to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Take care. You too. Governor Greg Abbott, ladies and gentlemen of the great state of Texas, thank you all for being out there. Remember, check out NewsmaxTV.com and Newsmax.com. We'll see you soon.